What is up, Harvesters? Welcome back to the returning viewers. And if you're brand new here, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. So today I want to talk to you guys about how to put in those poor man food plots. Now, you might be doing this because you just don't have all of the big fancy equipment. You don't want to buy all the tools and all of the fancy things to put in those big food plots. Or you might, but you are trying to put a food plot back in a deep, dark corner of your property where you can't get all of that big, heavy equipment back too. So whatever the case is, we're going to go through the simple steps of how to get those simple poor man food plots back in your woods so that you can see success this deer season. So first I want to talk about your site selection. So you're still going to want to pick an area that is somewhat level. You're not going to really want to try to put this on the side of a hill if you can help it. A slight hill is okay, but again, looking for something somewhere that's going to have some level terrain, good drainage. This shouldn't really be a hole that's going to gather a lot of water that's going to sit in there because that's really going to be detrimental to getting that seed growing once we get to that step. So once you find that site selection, you're also going to want to find an area that maybe doesn't have a ton of like underbrush for you to clear out because we'll get into the tools next. But one of the things you're going to have to do first is clear out that area so that you have a place to grow. So if during the site selection phase, you just pick an area that's already kind of naturally open a little bit, you're going to have less work to clear it out, obviously. So let's get into the tools that you will need to, in order to do this, even though we are going to still do this as cheap as possible. You can use something like a pruners or a trimmer in order to get some of that smaller underbrush out of there. In the true poor man food plot way, we are not going to be cutting down the big trees. Just let those grow in the middle of the food plot, clear out around them. You don't need a chainsaw for this stage. Now, if you do have one, by all means, get some of those big trees out of there too, but that's a lot more work and you're also going to need the more expensive tools like a chainsaw for something like that. Now, once you get in there and you get that cleared out, you're also going to want something to agitate the soil. So if you are putting this in, let's say the big woods, in a mature woods, you can get in there with something like a leaf blower and just blow out all of that leaf litter off of the forest floor to get down to that bare dirt or get in there just with like a steel rake and rake it out. Get that top layer of soil agitated just a little bit if you can. Now, if you're out and you're trying to put this in a field, what you're going to need to do is get out there with either a lawnmower or a weed whacker, get all of that native thatch grass cut down, down as close to the ground as you can get it, and then you're going to want to spray it. Now, you can spray it with glyphosate and 2,4-D if you'd like, or any sort of Roundup, any sort of weed killer. I've also heard for people that want to go more natural and stay away from those harsh chemicals, you can spray it with vinegar with a little bit of salt and soap in there. The soap is just to get it to grip to the leaves a little better, and that's supposed to do the trick as well. I have not tried that yet though, so I will be trying that soon, but if you guys have tried it, leave a comment down below. Let me know how well that stuff works, especially if you have used the glyphosate before, how well they compare to each other. Now. Once you do get that grass killed off, you are going to either need to wait for it to decay on its own and for that top thatch layer to break up, or again, you're going to need to get in there with like a steel rake and just break up that very top layer of soil. The more seed to soil contact you can get when you plant, the better a food plot you will have. So, all right, you got that soil ready to be seeded, but now what you want to keep in mind is when you're clearing all of that debris off of where that food plot is going to go, you want to be piling this stuff up on the edge of the food plot that has the biggest opening off into the woods or into the field, the biggest sight line that sees into this food plot. You want to block that off with this pile of debris if you can. Now, you do not want to create like a fence around the food plot with all of this debris because the deer will feel too trapped when they're in there and they won't go in there but you're just trying to cut down on those major sight lines and if you want to take an extra step while you're out there find some native saplings some native bushes brush anything you can find to dig up and plant on the edge of your food plot so that over the years it'll grow up and create that easy screen for you around that food plot and it'll be absolutely free so again poor man food plot here we're going to get this done without spending a whole lot of money and then just also keep in mind that while you're clearing out debris that's on the actual soil where the food plot itself is going to go to try to get as much sunlight down to that soil as possible too so if there's some other trees you can clear out some other brush you can clear out that's typically going to be to the south of the food plot if you're in the northern hemisphere because that's the way the sun's going to shine down onto that food plot get that cleared out too the more sunlight you get down to this food plot 
the better it's going to be. The more sunlight, the more energy gets into those plants, the bigger they grow, the more food you will have for your deer herd. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is get a soil sample and now you don't have to wait till your seed bed is completely prepped to get that soil sample. You can, if you know where this food plot's going to go, you can get in there because chances are if you're in the woods, your soil is going to be very acidic because it had all of that leaf litter over the years coming down in there and decaying. Now you are going to be very high in organic matter, which is very good. That means there will be a lot of food to feed the plants that you plant in there, but you need to get that pH right. And you can do that with lime. Lime's very cheap. It's only a couple bucks for a 50 pound bag. And then just depending on how much of that you need, that's what your soil test is going to tell you. Now I would also do what I can to get a fertilizer in there and get your soil just tip top shape because we're already probably only putting in a very small food plot if we're doing this the poor man way. So you want to make sure that that soil is giving your plants every single advantage they can so that this doesn't get browsed down. And speaking of browsing down, we're going to get into seed selection for a food plot like this. Now chances are, like I said, these aren't going to be very big. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that whatever you plant in them is very browse resistant. So if you plant something like brassicas in there, and they don't get a chance to get going, they're just gonna get nipped off and they're gonna be terminated and you're not gonna be left with anything in your food plot. Same thing with those beans and those peas. So what we're looking at planting here, if you're in the northern part of the country, is I love to plant winter rye, especially if you're up in that snow belt region around the Great Lakes. If you're a little further south, but still in that line of like southern Wisconsin on over in the southern part of the Great Lakes, you can get away with planting other cereal grains. So whatever you can find that's cheapest, it really won't matter. But if you're in those very cold, very high snow areas along the Great Lakes, I definitely recommend winter rye. Now, if you're further south, you can get away with planting things like clover and chicory in these plots as well. Those will really stand up to that browse pressure, but those need to be seeded earlier than these cereal grains. These cereal grains can get seeded right before the hunting season and they'll be nice and lush for your season while you're hunting. Now, once you get those plots in and they start growing, just keep an eye on them. I usually don't like putting trail cameras on a food plot because you're just gonna burn up your batteries and go through a card, fill up a card really quick, but you do wanna see how these are performing. So if they are getting browsed down, you want to be able to know that. And the way you can know that is either with a trail camera or to put an exclusion cage on there. So that's just a piece of wire that builds a cage around a part of the plot so nothing can eat that. You can just use some scrap chicken wire or whatever you have lying around to just exclude a part of the food plot to see if inside that cage everything is growing inches taller than everything else around. It means the deer are really pounding that plot. And how you make your plot even more browse tolerant is to layer in more seed if you're using cereal grain. So if you plant and it comes up and it's getting hit pretty hard because this is the only food plot within however many miles of where you are, throw some more seed down. You can keep layering in pounds and pounds of seed in order to keep fresh growth coming up. And because it's a cereal grain, it doesn't just die when it gets nipped off. Those older ones will keep growing as well, but you're just creating a thicker mat of a food plot for the deer herd. It'll really stand up to that browse pressure. Now, the other thing you can do is don't just put in one food plot. If you're gonna put in one little food plot, why not put in a string of them along like a line of movement that you're trying to get your deer herd to move along? So let's just say you hunt along a line of movement this way, just dot in a couple of these food plots. It'll really help to take the pressure off of each individual one. And it'll also help to compartmentalize your deer herd. So deer do put a lot of social pressure on each other. So if you have this little tiny food plot and it's the main food attraction for every deer in the woods, you're gonna run into issues of them not really wanting to go there because there's always too much other activity there. You'll have that big bully doe kick all your bucks out of there because she and her fawns are gonna feed on that food source. So if you put in a couple of these, maybe you do leave some room for him to hit up one of the other ones. Well, that bully doe is a few hundred yards down on a different one and that helps you to pack more deer into your property property, put more deer in a smaller area by compartmentalizing them, splitting them up, breaking up those sight lines between these attractions if you can also. That'll really help you guys. And I hope you guys take advantage of this and I hope you see success this season. If you really enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this one. Otherwise, go check out that one and I'll catch you guys on the next one.